Now that we have all of the individual chapter files made, we need to combine them together into a book. So I'm going to go to File, New, and create a book. I'm going to navigate to the folder where it belongs, place it in the interior, and I'm going to create a file name for this. This is all a book document is. It is basically a place for you to group your InDesign files together into your book document. I'm going to hit this plus sign here and add InDesign files to it. I'm going to highlight chapters 1 through 12 and tell those to open. Next, I'm going to add the about the offer. Sometimes they come in in funny random ways. I want about the author to be after chapters 1 through 12. I'm also going to add the front matter in the introduction. If we look at this InDesign book document, we see that the page numbers for every single chapter are Roman numerals. And we don't want that. We only want Roman numerals in the front matter and the introduction. I'm going to show you how to fix this. We want regular numbering to begin in chapter one. So let's open chapter one. Okay, here we are in chapter one. I'm going to open up the pages tab here. And I'm going to click on this section marker, this little triangle right here. I'm going to click on that and then right click and go to numbering and section options. What we are going to do is change the style to regular numbers here. And we are going to tell it to start page numbering at one. This is the only instance in the entire book document in which you want page numbering to start in this tab instead of automatic. Otherwise, you might have every single chapter starting at page one, and we don't want that. Unfortunately, I should have made sure that my template document had regular numbering applied before I began this process in order to save me some time, because now I have to go and select regular numerals in each and every chapter. But that is okay because I have to open them up regardless. So let's go to chapter one here. If we zoom in here, we can see that our running header says introduction. We want each chapter to have the correct running header and say chapter one or chapter two or chapter three accordingly. If we look at our master pages here, master page number A, we see that we already have section applied for each one of these running headers. This can be done by going over to type, insert special character, and then go to section marker as so. This has already been done for me, so I don't need to worry about this. Because this word section is here, it will be pulling and placing the, num the section name for each chapter. The section name is contained underneath this small triangle here where the numbering is also contained. I'm going to click on this and then right click, go to numbering and section options. And I want this section marker here to become chapter one. In this particular book, the chapters do not have any names. Otherwise, the name of the chapter could become the running header. It just depends on what the author wants. In this instance, I'm going to run through and make sure that each running header has the correct chapter and also the correct numbering. So let's go through and do that. 
I'm going to click on this, right click, numbering and section options. I'm going to change this to chapter two. And I'm going to make sure that the page numbering is on regular numerals. Okay, now we can see that each chapter has the proper running header. And if we look over here at our book document, we see that we have Roman numerals only in the introduction and then everything from there on out goes to regular numerals. The next part of our process is going to be running a checker through to make sure that we have all of the italics and bolds caught for the entire book. Before doing anything else, I'm going to save all of my documents using Control Shift Alt S. There we go. Now everything is saved and I am also going to save this book document here by clicking Save Document. So going back to chapter one, this is the chapter that we already styled. Chapters two through 12 and about the author have not been styled yet. Instead of going through and doing each one, one at a time, let's do them all at once. Let's open up chapter two. So here we can see everything is highlighted in this blue text, meaning that there are overrides to be overridden. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we are catching all of those italic and bold styles that will be lost if we clear them now. So let's go ahead and open up that find and change uh, dialog box again. I'm going to use control F and we are going to tell it to, in this grep tab here, we are going to tell it to look for a basic character format and style of italic. From there, we are going to apply a character style of italic to it. Now, if I hit Find Next, it will find it and change it, and Find Next and change it. However, this will only be finding the italics in this singular document. If I go here and change this to all documents, this is now going to change the italics for all documents in the book. So now if I click change all, so we can see here that the change finder has made 60 replacements without having to open every file individually. Okay, now that we have gone through and caught all of the italic styles, I have to run through and manually apply just a couple of styles to things that I don't want to get lost. Now I'm going to run through and add those manual styles that I can't add automatically, such as this quote here, and this quote author, and the first paragraph style for the chapter, in each of these places here where I see the manual line break breaks, I know that I must apply the style of first paragraph. As I get to the end of this chapter here, I see that I have some overset text, which can be noticed because of this little red box with the plus sign inside. So I'm going to add some more pages to this chapter. I'm going to let this overset text flow over here using shift click. Before I clear overrides, I'm going to make sure I run through and catch each of these paragraph styles for every chapter. Don't clear overrides until you're done with this. Now that we have added those manual styles, such as the chapter title, the quote, the quote author, and these first page styles, I can now go through and remove all of these extra returns where I no longer need those spaces. I'm going to do that using the find change, control F to pull that up. I'm going to be in the grep tab here, 
and I'm going to type that tilde B, tilde B to indicate the double return. I'm going to replace that with a single return, and I'm going to make sure that all documents are selected here. I'm now going to hit change all, and I'm going to continue to click this until it removes all of the double returns from the entire book document. The reason that we go through this process several times is because occasionally there might be an instance of three or four or even five returns, and it is just going through and reducing those down to one. Now that we have removed all of those extras, I'm also going to run through and check that there are no manual tabs. If you cannot remember the code for what a tab would be, go ahead and add one here. Copy that and place that into the find changer. Paste it. We'll see that the code for a tab is a backward slash T, and I'm going to change that to a style of nothing. I'm going to change all of those, and we'll see that I removed nine from the book. Now that I have done this, I am comfortable to remove all of these overrides. I'm going to go through each chapter here, select all the text with control A, and then tell it to clear the overrides. Because we have cleared a lot of those extra paragraph returns, we now have some extra blank pages at the end of this chapter, so I'm going to delete that page. In this instance, I'm going to go ahead and bump these journal prompts to the next page because I might as well use that space that I have. In the instance of this book, I want every new chapter to begin on a right-hand page. So at the end of each chapter, I must have a left-hand page, even if it is blank. When I do end up with a blank page, I want this to be an entirely blank page and not a blank page with a running header. So I'm going to apply a page, a master page style of none to it to get rid of that formatting. This is just another one of those traditional graphic design rules. Blank pages are blank pages and don't have running headers. Okay guys, I was having trouble with this image here being way too large in vector. Um, so I've since reduced that. And now that that file is smaller, we should be able to export this whole thing as a book. So first we're gonna save it. Then we are going to export book to PDF and only the selected documents will be exported. So you could export just chapter one through three if you wanted. All right, we're gonna select that high quality print. When you go to export your final file for Ingram Spark or for Kindle Direct Publishing, you want to use this PDF 2001 version. This is the one they require for those print jobs. But for now, we'll just leave it the high quality print. That's fine. Once this is finished exporting, we can easily and quickly run through the book in a PDF format to see if there are any errors we need to fix. One thing I have noticed here is that the left page running header says finding the path to me. However, if I look at the introduction of the book, I know that this book should be called Finding the Path of Me. Not to fear, we can change this pretty easily. In my book file, file over here, I can see that chapter one is the master, that is where all the styles are being pulled from. I'm going to click on chapter one here, and I'm going to go to the master pages for chapter one. I'm now going to change what this says here. Let me get this page number out of the way first. Okay, we're going to change this to finding the path of me. So far, this is chapter one. Only chapter one now has the correct running header. If we want to change this for the rest of the book, however, it is not too difficult. We can quickly change this if we go over here, select all of the documents, click this tab, 
open synchronize options, and then select parent pages. I believe this used to say master pages, but now it says parent pages and it means the same thing. This means that all of the styles from chapter one are now going to become also the master page styles for the rest of the entire book document. So we'll hit synchronize here, let that run through. And now if we go to our remaining chapters, we see that the running headers now say finding the path of me. One other thing that I've been noticing is I don't necessarily like the way that the chapters have these small numbers here. I think I'm going to change that. Again, this can easily be done by changing the style in chapter one and then synchronizing it through the rest of the book. I'm going to modify the paragraph style for chapter title. I'm going to make sure that it has a basic character format of normal. Actually, let's do all caps. We're going to do all caps. And let's spread that tracking out a little bit more, make it just a bit smaller. Okay, I'm happy with that now. So I'm going to hit OK. I have now changed this paragraph style for chapter one. I'm going to sync this through the rest of the book by again coming over here to my book file, highlighting all of the chapters, hitting this tab group, going to synchronize options, and I'm going to deselect everything except for paragraph styles. Now the entire book will synchronize with the chapter one styles. We'll hit synchronize here and we'll watch the magic happen. Now through the rest of these files here, we see that the chapter two is now the smaller typeface and is all capital. Scrolling through our PDF here, now we can see a pretty perfect rendition of this book interior. And this was all done in under an hour for about a hundred page book. All right, everybody, well, I hope this helped. Hopefully you can increase your efficiency and the speed at which you do your interior book layouts. So go out there, get better at InDesign and make more money. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>